Every person who comes under the tax purview is supposed to file the tax return before the due date to the income tax authority. He will honestly find out the tax liability of a particular assessee. Even the assessee will also find out his tax liability by looking into all kinds of rules and regulations which are formed by the tax authority. He reassess the total income of that particular assessee and collect the tax on that particular income. That is called reassessment. Hello dear students, I am Arun Kumar, lecturer in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysore. Dear students, welcome to this new session on the topic Assessment Procedure. So in this particular chapter, we will be discussing about assessment procedure and also about the tax authorities. So here in this particular session, we will be discussing about the income tax assessment. So Income Tax Act of 1961 mandates every person falling within the taxable bracket to file their income tax return before the due date. Yes, what does it mean? What does it mean really? So it is nothing but if the person falls under the tax liability, if the person comes under the tax purview. So who are the persons comes under tax purview? Companies and business entities, if their income is even they are earning one rupee, they are supposed to make the payment. They are supposed to make the tax uh, payment to the government at the end of the financial year. So they don't have any slab rate. Even they are earning one rupee also, they are supposed to make the payment of 30% of tax, whether it's a partnership firm or the company. If it comes to individual person, we have the slab rate, right? Up to 2,50,000 it is nil, more than 2,50,000 to 5 lakh it is 5%, 5 lakh to 10 lakh it is 20%, about 10 lakh it is 30%. So if it comes to the age group of 60 to 80 years, up to 3 lakh rupees it is exempt or nil. So 3 lakh to 5 lakh it is 5%, 5 lakh to 10 lakh it is 20% and about 10 lakh it is 30% for super senior citizens whose age group is more than 80 years up to 5 lakh it is exempt, 5 lakh to 10 lakh it is 20%, about 10 lakh it is 30%. So if any person falls under the tax purview, then he is supposed to file a tax return before the due date with the income tax authority. Post submission of the tax return, the income tax department goes on to verify the accounts and assess the tax liability. This process is known as an income tax assessment. Yes, so every person who comes under the tax purview is supposed to file the tax return before the due date to the income tax authority. After submission of particular income details, the tax authority is going to assess, the tax authority is going to assess the tax liability of that particular assessee. So this process is called income tax assessment. So in income tax assessment, we have different types. So the types of income tax assessment. The first type of assessment is self-assessment, the second one summary assessment and the third one scrutiny assessment, the fourth one best judgment assessment, fifth one protective assessment and the last one sixth one reassessment or income escaping assessment. So totally we have six types of assessments if it comes to assessment of income tax. So if you look into the first one, the self-assessment. So this is the type of income tax assessment in which the assessee calculates the tax themselves, usually accompanied by payment of the amount they believe is due. And after taking TDS and subtracting advance tax paid, the tax payable is required to be given under section 139, section 142 and section 148 or section 153A. So in self-assessment, what assessee will do? He assessee himself, he assess his total income and he pay the tax to the government. So he will not go to any, you know, chartered accountant or to the accountant. He himself assess the total income what he have for a particular year, for a particular financial year and he calculate or he compute the tax liability on his total income. If any TDS is made, any advance tax is made, he will be deducting that advance tax or the TDS from his total tax liability and he will be paying the remaining tax liability to the tax authority. So this process is called self-assessment. So in self-assessment, assessee himself 
assess his income for a financial year. Second type of assessment, it is summary assessment. So what summary assessment means? The assessment under section 143 subsection 1 is similar to the initial review of the tax return. The taxpayer receives an intimation under section 143 subsection 1 from the IRS under this section. The department will send you a comparative income tax calculation. The overall income or loss incurred is computed in the income tax assessment. Yes, here in summary assessment, what and all the information you will be giving to the tax authority, then they will be sending you the summary of your total tax liability and what and all the information you are given to the tax authority. So in summary assessment, you will be submitting all your details to the you know income tax authority, then the income tax authority will summarize those you know uh, information which are given by the SSE, then they will be sending the details to the SSE that is called summary assessment. Next one, scrutiny assessment. So scrutiny assessment is the assessment of a return filed by an SSE by providing an opportunity for the SSE to support the declared income and expenses as well as claims of deductions, losses, exemptions and so on in the return using the proof. The committee manages it using a single work plan. The committee undertakes specific work as well as forming informal panels that is for in-depth activities or working groups. The assessing officers is given the chance to conduct an investigation in order to determine if the assessee correctly reported his or her income in the return. The claims for deductions, exemptions and other benefits are legal and factually correct. In case of any omission, contradiction, inaccuracies or other errors, the assessing officer prepares his or her own assessment for the assessee's taking into account all relevant circumstances. Scrutiny assessment is the assessment of a return filed by an assessee by providing an opportunity for the assessee to support the declaration income and expenses. So here they are going to provide an opportunity to the assessee to provide all the details with respect to what and all the expenditures he claimed and what and all the deductions, losses, exemptions he claimed. So you can give the supporting documents to the tax authority and tax authority will scrutinize it which just the authority will go in depth about the all the expenditures, deductions and exemptions and if they get to know that what and all the exemptions, deductions are claimed by the SSE, those are correct, then that will be fine. If those things are not correct, then they goes on with the investigation with respect to that particular SSE's income and expenditure statement. And if that is correct, if the given information is correct, then they will be finding out the tax liability on the total income which is submitted by the SSE. If it is not correct, then they investigate it and wherever the error is occurred, they find out that error and they scrutinize the error. That is called scrutiny assessment. Next one, best judgment assessment. The term best judgment assessment refers to the assessing officer's opinion or calculation of the assessee's income in the context of income tax law. So the situation of best judgment assessment the evaluating officers will make the decision based on the best reasoning. They will not be dishonest. The assessee will not be dishonest in his or her assessment, nor will he or she be hostile to the officer. The officer will be calculating the tax or the you know total tax liability of a particular assessee based upon the honesty. So based upon the rules and regulations, which are comes under the income tax law. So he will honestly find out the tax liability of a particular SSE. Even the SSE will also find out his tax liability by looking into all kinds of rules and regulations which are formed by the tax authority. So in the same way, the assessing officer will also be following some you know rules and regulations. He will be honest while he is computing the tax liability of SSE and he uses all the rules and regulations and law which are there under income tax law. That is called best judgment assessment. Protective assessment. This is a type of assessment that focuses on those that are made to protect the revenue interest. 
the income tax legislation however has no provision for the imposition of income tax on anyone other than the person to whom it is due it is open to the authorities to undertake a protective or alternative assessment if it is unclear who among a few probable persons is actually liable to pay the tax so the authorities just make an assessment and keep it on paper until the situation is resolved when they make a protective assessment a protective order of assessment but not one of penalty can be issued protective assessment is all about to protect the revenues interest so the revenue will be there to the government so they are they are supposed to maintain the proper revenue to the government so what assessing officer will do is supposed to have an eye on all persons income earned for a financial year if any person falls under the in, you know a purview of income tax then that person is supposed to pay the tax to the government if he fails to pay the tax to the government then assessing officer will be you know calculating his total income and until he pays the you know tax to the government they keep that file with them once if he pay the tax then everything will be fine if he is not paying the tax then authority will be sending him a notice to pay the tax to the government under protective assessment so in protective assessment authorities will be calculating the tax on a particular person's income if he is not paying the tax to the government even though he comes under the tax purview next one reassessment or income escaping assessment so if the assessing officer has reason to think that income liable to tax has escaped assessment for any assessment year they will conduct an income escaping assessment under section 147 so moreover it gives them authority to reassess or recompute income turnover and other figures that have escaped their notice the goal of conducting an assessment under section 147 is to bring any income that escaped assessment in the original assessment into the tax net yes sometimes we are calculating the total income sometimes we may go we may miss some uh, you know incomes we may forget to add some incomes so if authority comes to know if authority gets to know that if some in case incomes are escaped if some incomes are escaped while calculating the tax then the authority will be having all the rights to reassess the escaped incomes and to tax on those incomes so what authority will do if any income is not included in the financial year or in the previous financial year then if it comes to the notice of assessee or the assessing officer they are supposed to make the payment so what assessing officer will do he re assess the total income of that particular assessee and collect the tax on that particular income that is called re assessment next one income tax authorities so who and all the persons comes under income tax authorities the first one cbdt or the central board of direct taxes cbdt stands for central board of direct taxes which has been constituted under the central board of revenue act 1963 so the first authority will be cbdt that is central board of direct tax second will be director general of income tax the first authority will be cbdt second authority will be director general of income tax third authority will be the chief commissioner of income tax next directors and commissioners of income tax next additional directors and additional commissioners of income tax next joint directors and joint commissioners of income tax next will come deputy directors and deputy commissioners of income tax next assistant directors and assistant commissioners of income tax next income tax officers at the last income tax inspectors so these are all the different authorities what we have under income tax purview so the first is central board of direct taxes then the director general of income tax will come and likewise at the last income tax inspectors will come so these are all the different authorities what we have under income tax purview so moving on to know the power of the income tax authorities so the basic powers are the first power is collection of information yes the authority will be having the power of collecting any information from any assessee or from any person which is relating to his 
income for a particular year. So correction of information, the authority have that power. Next, power of survey. Yes, they have the power of surveying the total income of a person or surveying the asset of a particular person. And power to call for information. Yes, they have the power to call for information. If they have a doubt on any person, if they want to clarify the doubt, they can call any person and they can clarify their doubts. If they have the doubt relating to the particular person's income, then they can call that particular person and they can inquire about his total income or his sources of income and they can get clarified with their doubts. Next, power to possess book of accounts. Yes, they have all the power to possess your book of accounts. If authority wants your book of accounts, you are supposed to hand over your book of accounts to the tax authority. You can't say no because that is the power given by the government to the authorities, to the tax, the tax officials. Next one, power of search and seizure. Yes, they have all the power of searching and seizing your properties or your belongings, your assets. So if they, if the raid happens, if any income tax raid happens, they have all the rights to ask you about some, you know, for some clarifications. They have power to, you know, possess your books of accounts. They have power to search and seize your property or the assets. And also power related to discover and produce evidence. Yes, they have the power to discover and produce evidences. So if they get some any evidence about you, they have all the powers to provide that evidence against you. So these are all the powers what the tax authority will be having. So if they ask you this question in the exam, you're supposed to write this many points under power of tax authorities. In the exam, compulsorily they'll be asking a question that is uh, types of assessment and also they'll be asking the tax authorities and the power of tax authorities. So with this, we are in the end of the session. So we'll meet in the upcoming session with few more topics. Until then, thank you all.